welcome on behalf of the Royal Town Planning Institute to Northern Ireland Plan Up Live Week of Conference. I'm Victoria Hills, I'm the Chief Executive of the Royal Town Planning Institute, and I'm delighted um, to present to you uh, Minister Nicola Mallon, um, who is the Minister for Infrastructure in Northern Ireland. And um, as you may have worked out, this is a bit of a pre-record and, and none of us are here together live today. Um, but we're delighted to be joined by the Minister to hear about the very important role of infrastructure in delivering successful places and planning its role within that. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to the Minister. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victoria, and I am delighted to be given an opportunity to speak to you today virtually uh, and to open this year's Royal Town Planning Institute NI Conference. I've had a look at your conference programme and there are a number of very interesting and indeed relevant sessions coming up across the rest of the week. This year's theme around the integration of land use and infrastructure planning is of particular interest to me, as you say, in my role as a Minister for Infrastructure. And this is, of course, no surprise, as I know my chief planner, Angus Kerr, is this year's chair of the Northern Ireland branch. The infrastructure portfolio is so important to the daily lives of all our people, our communities, our environment and our economy. I recognise that modern and sustainable infrastructure is a key building block of prosperity. Not only will it be an important part of our economic recovery in the months ahead, but it is also essential if we are to grow our economy, address regional imbalance and the climate emergency and support a thriving region where people want to live, work and invest. The financial climate remains difficult and it's significantly compounded by the COVID-19 crisis. But I am committed to seizing the opportunities to enable a greener, cleaner recovery towards a new and better normal for all of us. I have already taken a number of important decisions that I believe will ensure that my department will play its part in responding to this crisis and that will enable our recovery from it to a new way of living and working. I will talk more about some of these decisions today and focus on the role that I believe planners and the planning profession have to play in all of this. Firstly, for me, we need to get the basics right. We need to properly invest on in our current assets. We all know that there is a long history of underinvestment in our infrastructure and this must be addressed. We need to protect our water and wastewater services, our public transport network, uh, keep the lights on and our roads safe. The no drains, no cranes reality must be heard. And we also need to invest in sustainable infrastructure that not only helps connectivity, but improves the feel of our towns and cities, and of course benefits our environment and health. We need to continue improving public transport, road connectivity and sustainable travel options to better join our communities and grow our all island economy. With the single biggest capital budget, my department is well placed to help boost the economy through infrastructure investment. But this investment cannot take place in isolation or without an understanding of the potential impacts these investments can have. I believe the planners and the planning system generally have a vital role to play in ensuring infrastructure development is taken forward in the best way possible. Planning can ensure that the infrastructure implications of development are properly considered and addressed and that new infrastructure is planned to take account of the wider context. We have to think differently, we have to be bold and we have to seize our chance for change. As you can imagine, since March, my department and I have been very much focused on our response to COVID-19. The early days of the pandemic involved work to ensure that essential services continued and that all staff who were able to work from home were facilitated to do so. In determining which services to prioritise at any given time, I reflected on the absolute need to stop the spread of the virus and save lives, as well as considering the need to support those working to keep us safe and keep our critical supply chains open and to protect livelihoods. A key priority for my department was to ensure that our public transport system remained operational as this provided transport for many of our key workers. 
and that our vital supply routes remained open and effective, thus maintaining the delivery of food and medical supplies. This involved providing support to the strategic elements of these routes, including airports, ports, ferry operators, hauliers, and at a local level, asking councils to temporarily take a flexible and pragmatic planning approach to issues such as timing of food deliveries. From a planning perspective, and as many of you will be aware, my officials work closely with local government to ensure that the wider planning system continue to operate as effectively as possible during the pandemic to prevent a backlog of applications building up and impacting on our longer term economic recovery. We also quickly approved new schemes of delegation to allow planning decisions to be taken by council officers until virtual council meetings could be established, provided updates and advice to councils on the ongoing operation of the planning system, including support for practical measures to keep delivering local planning services. In addition, I introduced emergency legislation to temporarily suspend the requirement for a pre-application community consultation public event for major planning applications, while ensuring that guidance issued from the department to ensure that active pre-application public engagement in the absence of public events remains an important part of our planning system. Since moving into the recovery phase and as wider restrictions continue to be relaxed, I am continuing to explore how we can keep seizing the chance for change. And again, planning will have an important role to play. As I have stated on a number of occasions, if we just get back to normal after all the sacrifices that families, communities and businesses have made, then we will have learnt nothing and we will have missed a huge opportunity. We must be bold and take this opportunity to imagine and plan for a better, greener, healthier, happier future. And as Minister for Infrastructure, I am committed to the delivery of change within our communities. Change that transforms lives, enhances our economy and leads to long term growth and opportunities on our island. I have already taken actions that I believe will make a positive contribution to the post COVID recovery. In May, I created a walking and cycling champion within my department to spearhead delivery on my commitment to increase the percentage of journeys made by walking and cycling. This approach gives real focus to the green recovery and addressing the climate emergency and embeds more active ways of travelling at the very heart of policy. My officials are also working hard to increase the space available for people who want to walk and cycle through implementing a range of measures, including extending pavements, the pedestrianisation of streets, the introduction of pop up cycle lanes, the identification and creation of quiet streets where pedestrians, cyclists and play have a priority over motor vehicles. And we are taking action to address traffic issues in inner city neighbourhoods and exploring opportunities to weave blue infrastructure together with new cycle paths and footways. I have also made two £20 million available for a new blue green infrastructure fund. And I believe the blue green infrastructure will not only assist the greening of our urban environments and facilitate better water management, but will also support safer, cleaner, sustainable spaces that allow interconnectivity, provide recreation spaces, help communities to connect and thrive economically and socially. Blue Green Infrastructure also has the added benefit of encouraging more physical active lifestyles, social inclusion, increased biodiversity, and it reduces the reliance on motor transport and helps to bolster the local economy and tourism. I've also established an independent ministerial advisory panel on infrastructure to assist me in delivering this cleaner, greener, sustainable and inclusive approach to infrastructure. The panel comprises of a small group of independent experts and key stakeholders with an interest in infrastructure and will consider how an infrastructure commission for Northern Ireland might support more effectively the long term planning and development of infrastructure across the island of Ireland. The first meeting of the panel took place on the 25th of August and they are now undertaking an evidence gathering exercise which includes engagement with key stakeholders and consideration of global best practice in respect of infrastructure development and delivery. I anticipate that the panel will present a report of their findings to me by the end of September 
and this will form the basis of a series of recommendations which I will bring to the executive for consideration in the autumn. The planning system will of course have a critical role to play in underpinning each of these initiatives and in supporting future economic and social recovery in Northern Ireland. As a profession, you have a vital role to play in the future development of the places in which we live, work and enjoy our leisure time. In these uncertain times, planners are well placed to guide, encourage and promote a more sustainable and integrated approach to land use and infrastructure development and to look for innovative and locally agreed solutions to the challenges we continue to face. Key in all of this will be the suite of local development plans that are currently being brought forward. These plans will be a vehicle to assist in creating a positive post-pandemic environment for everyone. They should ensure that as we plan our settlements and neighbourhoods to meet future housing and infrastructure need, we are doing so in a sustainable and integrated way. My department will continue to play an important role here, ensuring strategic policies are taken into account and that those plans being developed support the changes we have seen not only in travel behaviour, but in terms of lifestyle change. Priority should continue to be given to development in sustainable locations to facilitate a high degree of integration between housing, centres of employment, community services and public transport to facilitate active travel and to take advantage of existing infrastructure. The past six months have presented many challenges, not least to plan progression, and I think it is important to acknowledge the commitment of local councils in continuing to progress their plans during this period. It is now more important than ever that this work continues so that up-to-date plans can be put in place to provide certainty, help facilitate sustainable development and to underpin the green recovery. I am also conscious that the planning system and in particular those areas of planning responsibility that fall within my own department need to improve and create an enabling environment for economic recovery and for many of the other changes I have already highlighted. As we focus on a new approach in this new normal, we also need to improve our performance in the here and now. This involves improving the quality of applications submitted, improving consultee response times, not least in the Department for Infrastructure, and improving the overall efficiency of the planning system and process. I am currently working closely with my officials in respect of our current legislative provisions and how they can contribute to the efficiency and effectiveness of our planning system to support economic recovery and infrastructure delivery. I am committed to removing unnecessary legislative requirements and to lightening the regulatory burden for businesses where appropriate. This includes a review of the implementation of the Planning Act 2011, and the consideration of changes to permitted development rights. COVID-19 has highlighted the importance of improving our digital infrastructure. And I'm currently also considering legislative amendments which would bring Northern Ireland into closer alignment with our neighbouring administrations while balancing environmental, amenity and health concerns. I'm also considering how the planning system can support the expansion of electric vehicle charge point infrastructure through, for example, removing the requirement for planning permission for the installation of electric vehicle charging points in lawful off-street car parking areas. The recent passage of the Executive Committee Functions Act is also significant insofar as it enables me, as Minister for Infrastructure, to take decisions on important planning applications which are often regionally significant infrastructure projects. I will progress these as quickly as is reasonably possible so that a sound decision can be made on them. This is even more important now as I firmly believe that these major developments will assist recovery for our communities and our economy. My department and local government have also been working together to deliver a new planning IT system that will replace the existing Northern Ireland planning portal, which is reaching the end of its operational life. This business critical IT system is a high priority project for the department, and it's a good example of central and local government working together to deliver a common IT system that will support the planning system in the department and in councils. The aim is to begin roll out or to begin to roll out the new system across councils around this time next year. 
This new modernized planning IT system will facilitate a more responsive and efficient planning service across both local and central government, including bringing key services like the submission of applications online. This increased use of technology and online processing will be of significant benefit in supporting economic recovery in the context of COVID-19. More than ever, when faced with the challenge of COVID-19, the turbulence of Brexit and the climate emergency, I believe we need to radically change the way we do things and plan for our future. It is my firm view that the planning profession and indeed the planning system are well placed to address these challenges innovatively through partnership working across both central and local government and also across the public and private sectors, working with our communities and with our neighbours across these islands. This is our chance for change and I firmly believe that the planning profession can rise to the challenge and help to build a better future that citizens here so deserve. Well, Minister Mallon, thank you so much for such an excellent, heartfelt speech. And what a way to open our 2020 Northern Ireland RTPI planning conference, uh, Plan Alive Online. Um, I think no one can be in any doubt that, um, that infrastructure has a key role to play in the green recovery. And no one could accuse planning and planners of having sat still during this pandemic. And I think you very helpfully set out that planning and planners um, really have a major opportunity to be at the gateway of that green recovery. So thank you for such a, a thought-provoking introduction to our week-long of discussion and debate. So um, just a, a quick icebreaker question, if, if you like, if I may, Minister. You took up your position on the 11th of January 2020. This will be a year that many of us uh, will, will not forget. It's quite a year to take up a ministerial post. How has the first eight months of 2020 been for you? I think it probably is best described as a baptism of fire. Um, I took up post after there being no government here uh, in the north for three years. So you've a huge backlog of decisions and work. And then no one expected or anticipated COVID-19. So I, I guess a lot of my focus and work has been in responding to COVID-19. So it, has, it hasn't been the job that I have imagined. But in the same sense, we have seen, I think, a lot of positivity from COVID where our partners have worked together, found new and quick ways of working and have been able to achieve a lot. And so we've learned lessons that I think it's really important to build on. But as you say, this is a year that none of us will ever forget. Yeah. OK, no, thank you for, for being so open and honest about that. And it's great to hear that you've set up a new um, ministerial advisory panel on the role and value um, of an infrastructure commission. Um, we very much welcome this and we look forward to sharing the RTPI's experience in this field across the UK and Ireland. Um, I was going to ask you, could you tell us a little bit about its remit and timetable? But I think you sort of alluded uh, a little bit to, to that, uh, noting that it had met for, for the first time already a couple of weeks back on the uh, 25th of August. But um, any early sort of snippets coming out of that? Any early things um, that you could share with us? Well, I've been very clear that we should, I believe, have a strategic long term approach to infrastructure and investment in infrastructure and that it should be uh, a partnership approach as well, which led me to set up this ministerial advisory group. And they will, of course, focus in on hard infrastructure that falls within my department. But they've also been tasked with looking at the, the value and the role of, a, of an infrastructure commission and how that might operate. I've also been very clear that it is independent of me uh, and the department. So it has been set up. I attended the very beginning of its first meeting on um, the 25th of August, but I have stepped back to let the ministerial advisory group get on with the job that it has. And it has met, it is now in the process of evidence gathering from a range of stakeholders. Uh, and then towards the end of September, I anticipate that I will be provided with a report uh, containing a series of recommendations. Uh, my plan then is to take that to my wider executive colleagues um, because for an infrastructure commission to work, I believe in its best sense, it needs to um, view infrastructure in its widest sense, which would bring in the roles and responsibilities of some of the other ministers in the executive. But I think it's a really timely moment to be doing this. We can see global press practice in this area, but we're also 
um, facing huge difficulties in terms of COVID recovery, economic recovery, and with Brexit. So I think now is the opportune moment to start to do things in a, in a better and in a more strategic uh, long-term fashion. So I'm very excited about this initiative, and I hope that my ministerial colleagues are as excited by it um, as I am. Yes, I'm, I'm sure they will be. It's it's certainly going to be a hot topic infrastructure and and with infrastructure and such a wide portfolio comes a rather large budget. I think, as you alluded to, you've got the largest capital uh, budget here. So some big spending areas coming down the pipeline, so to speak. Um, the RTPI would say that planning was really one of your most important tools for coordinating infrastructure and, and development. Um, how are you going to use planning to ensure a more sustainable, resilient approach to infrastructure development going forward? I suppose for me, um, planning is in the very simplest sense in my mind, it's about place shaping um, and it's about ensuring that uh, people are at the centre of place shaping, but that we also future proof it. Uh, and so we're in a COVID crisis. We have rallied um, as a community, as a society, uh, as governments to respond to that uh, in a very comprehensive way. Um, we shouldn't lose sight that we are also in the midst of a climate emergency and planning is key to that. Climate action should be um, at the forefront of how we are shaping our places, our housing development, you know, access to renewable sources of energy, how our transport system would work as well. So I think uh, planners and the planning system is, a, is I'm very much at the heart um, of that process. And it's also at the heart of ensuring that communities can feed into and shape their localities um, as well. So it, planners are in a very unique um, position in that way, uh, like a foundation stone. And that's why I'm very keen to see improvements in the planning system, but to also work with colleagues to make sure that we get the right planning, we get the right infrastructure, and that we do it in a way that is very conscious of the wider context and is more holistic in terms of its approach and is more sustainable and integrated as well. Well, that's so good to hear. I know our members will be very excited and keen to work with you on this very important brief. Um, Northern Ireland's plan-led system was introduced relatively recently in 2015 alongside wide reform of public authorities. Um, we're very pleased to learn about the Department for Infrastructure and Council investment in a new regional IT uh, system. We've all been living and breathing far more IT than we ever thought we would do um, and perhaps become more experts at using it over the last six months. Um, and we believe at the Institute this will really help the resilience, the efficiency of the planning system going forward in Northern Ireland. Do you have any other plans, sort of five years on reflecting, any other plans to make amendments to the system based on learning and experiences over these first five very important years? Yes, well, as you say, um, Victoria, the IT system will make big improvements, I believe. And I also think, you know, it demonstrates what you can achieve when central government works closely with local government as well. Um, but in addition to that, um, I am currently considering uh, reforms around permitted development rights um, when it comes to telecommunications, uh, oil and gas exploration, um, and also in the area of electric uh, vehicle charging points as well. I think we can make some improvements and some efficiencies there, and I'm giving very active consideration to that. Uh, also within the department, we've established a cross-departmental planning forum of senior leaders. And that's to focus in on areas such as, you know, consultee response times. Uh, and it's about making sure that uh, as consultees, we are improving our, our performance uh, and looking at what each of us can do individually, but collectively. And so I'm looking forward to getting feedback on the forum. I, I think the challenge for us at this moment in this time is trying to measure um, our improvements because obviously COVID has altered the environment. Uh, but my chief planner has just come from another meeting of the planning forum this afternoon. And, you know, it's clear that um, we do have a lot of focus now than perhaps might not have been there before. And we have, you know, a large number of the consultees around the table and willing to engage. So I think that that can also lead to positive uh, improvements, particularly in the area of performance in our planning system as well. Well, there's certainly a lot going on there and exciting times. And at the Royal Town Planning Institute, we're very keen to work across uh, the devolved nations to bring in and share best practice of what's going on in Scotland, in Ireland, in England, and working with colleagues in Northern Ireland as well. Um, because um, there is obviously a lot going on 
in responding to the pandemic and many other um, considerations to take on board, not least, as you said, uh, climate change, climate action. Yeah. So, uh, Minister Malon, Minister for Infrastructure, thank you so much for being so very generous with your time uh, with us here today. Um, I'm sure that everybody listening in will very much appreciate those insights and will very much look forward to um, the next chapter as we move through the recovery in a post-COVID planning world. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. And to everyone listening, we hope that you have a fabulous week of conference activity. Thank you.